Hi, I'm Alicia Little, and in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to set up an email account and how to stay safe while using email. So we're ready to set up a Gmail account. Now, what I need you to do is go to the browser. So open up a browser, it could be Chrome or Safari. And in the top, I just want you to type in gmail.com. So you type in gmail.com and then it's going to take you to Gmail's website to get signed up. You're going to see a blue button that says create an account. You see that blue button? I want you to click on that blue button and now we're going to create a Gmail account. So the first thing it's going to ask you for is your first name and then your last name and then your username. So what email account would you like to create here on Gmail? So I will create the digital jam pro newer. If you need to email me, my new email will be the digital jampreneur at gmail.com. Let's proofread everything to make sure that we've got that correct. Now we need to create a password. I'm going to encourage you, do not use a password that you've used anywhere else on the internet, the password used for banking. Use a completely unique and custom password. Let's make sure that your password is eight characters with a mix of letters, numbers, and symbols. This will keep your password the safest. What I'm going to do right now is think of a password and write it down first before I enter it in there so that I know my password and can remember it. All right, so my password will be, I'm not gonna tell you, and I'm writing it down. So my password is a mix of a capital, capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and, and symbols. So here I go. All right, now what I need to do is confirm it, which means I need to type in that password one more time to make sure that I've got it down. And remember, I wrote it down, which I recommend for you as well. I entered in the password, I confirmed the password, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click the next button. So now it's gonna ask me for a phone number, a recovery email, my date of birth, and my gender. This phone number is very important, and I want you to pick a phone number that if you were to lose access to your Gmail account, all you would have to do is to put this phone number in and you would get access back to your Gmail account. So this is used for account security and is not visible to others. So I'm gonna type in my phone number. So you shouldn't tell anyone else the information that you're putting on this page to sign up for your for your Gmail account because you want that to be private to you. So now I'm gonna just type in another email account that I have. So if you have another email account, you would put that in that for a recovery email. If you don't have another email account, leave that blank for now. Now you're gonna type in your date of birth and then you're gonna pick your gender and then you're gonna click on the next button. Google is gonna want you to verify your phone number. To make sure that it's yours, it's gonna send you a text message with a six digit verification code. So I'm gonna go ahead and my phone number's in there. I'm gonna go ahead and press the send button. And now I'm gonna be asked to verify my code. On my smartphone, I just received my verification code, which I'm going to type in. Now your verification code will come with G dash in front of it. You do not need to retype the G. So you're just gonna type in the numbers that come after that. And remember, you will get that text message. Now, if you didn't get the text message, you can click the words that say call instead and they'll call you, your phone will ring, you'll answer it and it'll have a voice um, message with the code in it. You'll write that code down and then put it in here there's going to be some different options and Google is asking me here, I can add a phone number to my account to use across the Google services. This is um, known as a Google number. So I can receive video calls and messages, make Google services uh, with this phone number. Um, so you can either push skip if you don't want it, or if you would like it, yes, I'm in now. Depending on where you are in your Google account, you may or may not get that option. If you don't get that option, just keep moving. <laughs> Under privacy and terms, I clicked on I agree. You're gonna wanna read the privacy and terms, understand it, click on I agree. And now that I'm in my brand new Gmail account, do you like it? I'm gonna show you around 
and show you what's happening inside of this Gmail account. So Google now has something called Google Meet in Gmail, and this is where you can have video meetings um, for up to 100 people. Great thing to do for work. So if you're looking for a video meeting solution, there you go right there with Google Meet. As I look at my email account now, I'll see that I have three folders, a primary folder, a social folder, and a promotions folder. And then is something I want to point out is that when you're in your email and you see an email with this green box in front of it that says add, right, that right there means that's advertising. So I just want you to be aware of that. Now, with getting started with Gmail, there's a lot that you can do. You can customize your inbox, change your profile image so I can drag and put a, a photo there. Um, import contacts and mail and then get Gmail for mobile. So it's important to point out at this point that you can also sign up for a Gmail account on your phone. So you can go to the browser on your phone, sign up for an account and then download the Gmail app to make using email on your phone even that much simpler and get notifications of when new emails come in. So now that you set up an email account, <laughs> let's take a minute to celebrate as we look at some of the other features that are here in your Gmail account. Sending your first email, it's gonna be fun. So what I want you to do is over here, I want you to look at the compose button. Do you see that button that says compose? With a plus sign on it, click on it, and it's now going to open up the ability for you to create your first email. So we're going to expand this so that it's taking up a bigger part of your screen. And you're going to think about, first of all, who are you sending an email to? So let's send an email to the digital jampreneur at gmail.com. Now, if you want to include someone on the email, um, you can CC, which means carbon copy, a recipient. So if I was to carbon copy um, Internet Income Jamaica, I would do help desk at internetincomejamaica.com. Now, everybody that you carbon copy can see the other people that are also carbon copied on that email. If you don't want that to happen, then I want you to BCC them. So if I put this email address and info. Now, both of those email addresses, because I blind carbon copied them, they won't see the other people that I've sent this email to. So it's really important as you're sending out emails that you decide, do I want everyone to see the other people that are getting the email? If you do, that's a carbon copy. And if you don't, it's a blind carbon copy. Now, here is my subject line. Right, that's the subject. Now it's the body of the email, what I'm actually typing and sending. So <laughs> now that the email is composed, on the bottom I can look and see that I have so many options to make this email really the way that I want it. I can change the font of the email, how big the text is, if I wanna bold it, italicize it, underline it, change the text color. So then I can also see that I can attach a file. I can insert a link. So my website is Internet Income Jamaica. So I'm going to put PS, right? So I'm going to highlight the word here. I'm going to click on the insert link. And now I'm going to type in the internetincomejamaica.com. So the URL of my business. So now <laughs> I want to test the link first. So I'm going to test it. Does that go over to my website? It does. So it works. So always important to test things. So now I'm going to click OK. And you can see right here that it will take them to this link. I'm going to test it one more time, see if it pulls up the website. And it does. So I'm there and I'm at the website now. So that is the inserting link. I can insert emojis. It'll help me find some emojis. Um, I can link to files inside my Google Drive, which I'll teach you about Google Drive in another episode. I can insert photos, and I can also insert a signature, but I have not set up a signature yet. Let's go ahead and send this email. I've got two options. I can send the email right now, so I can send it to you right now, or I can schedule a send. 
So let's think about this for a minute. If you want to create an email that gets sent later, you can pick a date and time to send that email. So I could send this email tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. this afternoon or Monday morning. So let's say that I want to send an email to my staff at Internet Income Jamaica, reminding them of the team meeting at 8.30 in the morning. What I would do is I would schedule this email and I would say, don't forget the team meeting is in 30 minutes and the email will go out tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. If I want to pick a specific date and time, I open up the pick a date and time and look at that. You can pick a date and time to send the email. So now I'm going to go ahead and send the email and it says at the bottom message sent. I've got a quick minute to undo it or I can actually view it. Now I'm sending the message to myself. So I'm going to go to my inbox to find it. So I click on inbox and look at that message right there. Hello, it's Alicia. And I just wanted to say hello. This is what the email looks like. Now that I'm in this email, I can click there and see that it's going to open up on the website because remember, I linked it to my website. That's the basics right there of sending an email. Now, what can I do with this email? I can click reply. I can also forward this message to someone else. So let's say I want to forward it to help desk at Internet Income Jamaica. So my sister sees it. I would put in that email there and click send. And even at this point where I'm forwarding and replying, I can schedule a time to forward and reply. Now, one of the great things to do is also to filter your emails. So you can create labels for your emails and filter them so that your inbox stays clean and organized. All right. I hope that you have enjoyed that and now you know how to send an email in Gmail. All right, let's talk about how to stay safe while in your email. The first thing is make sure that the password you set up your email account with, that it is unique to this email account. Don't use a password that you're using for your financial institution or somewhere else. Make sure that you have a unique password and never give your password out to anyone else. Don't email it to them. Don't call them and give them your password. That password is for you to log into your email. If at any time you feel like your password might have been compromised, you can change your password. Now, never ever open an attachment that you're unsure of. If someone sends you an attachment and you're unsure of the sender, you were not expecting this attachment, don't click and download it. Those types of at attachments that are malicious often contain viruses and allow hackers to access your data or your computer. When you're done with your email, always log out. When you wanna check it again, you can log back in. Another tip is never share your personal information in email. Don't email your TRN number, your address, your date of birth. Don't do it. If someone asks you to email those details to them, be very suspicious of that. You should never email personal information. Be careful of malicious emails. Sometimes scammers and hackers will send an email that looks legit, but it's not. For example, they'll send an email that totally looks like it's coming from your financial institution, but it's not. If that email asks for you to send personal information or to log into a site so that they can update your username and password, or they're looking for your username and password somehow and asking for it, be very careful. Your financial institution will never ask you to send personal information in email or to click on a link and they do that for security reasons. Also, malicious emails that appear to be coming from the government, be careful because that's another common scam that's out there. Bottom line is be cautious, be cautious. If you're unsure, don't click and don't download and that will allow you to stay safe while using your email. Now, to access a replay of this show or to see other shows, please visit our website at internetincomejamaica.com. Click on the Digital Jampreneur and you can see all of the information on this show right there. Also, you can find more ways to connect with me and my team.